right, God bless you. You may be seated. You may be seated. I want to just, again, <clears throat> thank the pastor. I need some water, a bottle of water. Y'all good? Yeah. <clears throat> thank uh, my spiritual children. They are just amazing to me, what God is doing in their lives. Can you give it up for man and woman of God of this house? Better than that? <laughs> Amen. You have genuine people who, who, uh, who, who really love, who really love you, love this church, love the calling of God that's on their lives. And of course, you know, Lady B is always with me. Where I am, there she is also. Lady B, won't you stand? Amen and amen. And give yourselves a hand clap. Y'all become, y'all just so wonderful. <clears throat> now, I'm going to be teaching tonight from uh, a prophetic word God gave me for this year. I'll only be talking about a part of it. If you want all of it, you'll have to, I'll talk with Pastor and he'll, he'll tell you about how you can get the whole word. But I'm just going to talk about a part of it and may refer to other parts of it. Um, and our, our, our opening text will be Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1 and verse 16, 17. Um, we have, uh, yeah, they, that's so good. They've got the, they're going to put some uh, on the screen, the scriptures on the screen. Got a couple of graphs and, you know, some pictures and that sort of thing. I love the technology that we have now because it enables us to, uh, to maximize the teaching moment. Amen. Do you have your Bibles? Yes, I see a lot of people have paper Bibles. That's good. Or your device. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> so let's declare, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I am a believer, not a doubter. I'm a doer, not just a hearer. And my life is the better after having heard, After having heard. The, word of faith. the word of faith. Faith comes by hearing, comes by hearing. And, hearing. and hearing, hearing by, hearing by. The, word of God. the word of God. Amen and amen. All right, now, if you're a good class, I think I can get finished in about 35 minutes. Because y'all going to be in church all week. And I'm not going to try to keep y'all here all night. Now, if you make me plow, <laughs> you got it? You make me plow, I'm, I might have to do 40 minutes. If you make me press, I don't know when I'm going to get out of here. <laughs> All right. Now, if you ever hear me for the first time, uh, you know, I, I, I just have a, I have, a, uh, have a wonderful time. I enjoyed this moment. I enjoy preaching the Word of God. I have a fun time doing it, uh, and uh, it, it has been so, uh, throughout the night, you know, as I'm teaching the Word, I want you to just be sure to listen carefully. God wants to do something in your life this year He's never done before. He, he, now, do you, I want you to really get that. He wants to do something in your life tonight that He's not done before. And so, uh, He wants you to take new territory, have a new experience. And so, uh, as we shared this word with you tonight, and I don't know, how many years have I been coming here? Do you know? 24? I've been coming here ever since the beginning? All right then. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> All right, let's get into this word tonight. My subject is going to be living the life of intentional faith. Living a life of, in, everybody say, intentional faith. Yeah. All right, all right. Now, Romans chapter 1, it, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone, everyone, everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. 
as it is written, the just shall what? The just shall what? They shall live by faith. And so um, God gives, uh, during the um, uh, latter part of the year, since I am one of the ap apostolic voices in the body of Christ, not the only one, I always pray to ask God, okay, God, what is it that you want me to tell your church to do? And uh, <clears throat> God lives in one eternal now. If y'all have that graph, you can put that up. He lives in one eternal now. With God, there is no time. But out of that eternity, he's carved out time, how he's going to deal with mankind. And out of time, he has carved out dispensations. Now, dispensation simply means that God is going to deal with man in a specific way in this time frame. And out of dispensations is timing. Timing has to do when, when uh, the prophetic clock or the providential clock says he's to do something, you see it in the Bible as the fullness of time. But then there are also seasons. Everybody say seasons. Now, seasons are when God says he's going to deal with man in a specific way, that in this time you can look for God to do a certain thing. And in Amos chapter 3, he tells us that he's not going to do anything. There it is. Surely the Lord will do nothing but he revealeth his secrets to his servants, the prophets. So in the season, and we like to look at the season like this year, what is God up to? What does God expect? What can, what can we hear from God so that we can be ready to uh, obey and ready and warned if need be? Amen? So God says he'll raise up voices, apostolic voices, prophetic voices to give insight into what he wants to do in a season. So I always ask God, and uh, I don't make stuff up. God don't tell me I'm not going to try to make something up uh, just so I can say I said it. And not, a lot of people got in trouble uh, last year when they started, I mean, the year, you know, of the election, talking about the Lord said this, the Lord, Lord didn't say some of that stuff because it didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> then they had to come and apologize. Yeah. Okay, now I see 27 up there. What is that? And it's not moving. Huh? They don't, have you on the clock. they don't have me on the clock. They need to. <laughs> they need to. So, so, so I tell you what, I tell you what, because right now they seem like they're going to be a slow class. <laughs> give me 40. Give me 40, and then if they're okay, I'll give them some change. <laughs> give me 40. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> See, the Lord don't want us sitting around here looking like we've been baptized in pickle juice. Yeah, amen. Praise the Lord. That's why, y'all know, watch this, watch this. Now, here is the first part of what God told me about the, the coming time. And this is this. Let's see what they got. See, they put that on the little bitty, little bitty time. I got that. Okay. All right. We good. We good. We good. Well, but what that 27 up there for? All right, y'all quit playing. <laughs> the year 2024 for the believer is the year of intentional faith. Yeah. Yeah. Though we should always be functioning with intentional faith, the coming year's calamities and potential distractions require focus, functionality in faith to experience the promised manifestations. The believer in the kingdom of God will be surrounded by the cries of great sufferings, pain, poverty at home and abroad. For some, it will be extremely difficult to believe for God's best because the voice of the word of God will be drowned out by the voices of doubt and unbelief from the world, the voices of negative circumstances, and even those religious voices of the household of faith. The temptation to tolerate lack, tolerate sickness, tolerate emotional distress, 
tolerate fear and to tolerate suffering will be present and must be overcome by intentional faith acts. Only discipline, intentional faith, and the faithfulness will and the faithfulness will be able to abound amidst seemingly insurmountable odds and social distresses. Now that's just part of it. In a nutshell, God says, this is the year when we must exercise intentional faith. We're going to see sufferings all around us, the negativity all around us, but it's not going to come nigh you. The Lord said he will create for us a Goshen-like experience. Now, Goshen was a suburb of Egypt. And even though there were plagues going on in Egypt, it didn't touch Goshen. Goshen was a place where there was prosperity, there were provisions. God says Psalms 91 will become a reality. You will see thousands fall on one side and thousands on the other side, but it shall not come nigh you. And it will require that you be intentional in your faith. Everybody say intentional. Now, when I hear a prophetic voice, number one, it must always agree with the promises of God. Any prophetic voice activates the power of God. That's why it has to be spoken. It also alerts the people of God, and it announces the plan of God. Amen. All right. Now, those of you who have my notes, I want y'all to try to keep up with me so we can put them on the screen. Now, so when I, I have to value the voice, the prophetic voice. Why I value? Because God says he's, when he's going to do something, he's going to let somebody know so they can tell you. I have, to, I have to validate that voice. I've got to be able to know that that voice is a proven voice. It's a proven voice. So just anybody who walks around with a card, say they're a prophet, I mean, I'm not going to necessarily listen to them. i got to know something about their character, their correctness, and their consistency. Yes, yes. Amen? Yes. <laughs> you know, the Bible says that when <clears throat> Saul was looking for his daddy's donkeys and his servant says, there is an honorable man of God in the city. And what he, surely, what he says surely comes to pass. So, you know, that's it. Now, you know, my resume speaks for itself. In 2017, I told all the pastors in the meeting, I said, now you will have, the Lord said, you'll have to learn to do church from home. They all laughed at me until 2020 came. And they couldn't come to church, and they had to do church from home. Amen. 9-11, now God didn't tell me that the plane was going to fly into the building, but he did tell me, he says, tell everybody you know not to fly in 2020. In, in 20, I mean, in, uh, in uh, what's that, 20? What's that? 2001, 2001, 2001. All right, all right, watch it, watch it. 9-11, 9-11, I just said 9-11, y'all got that. Watch it. Let's watch this. So I had invitations given to me. I turned them all down in September. Then I had people call saying, we have double honorary. I said, no, I told you God said not to go in September. Wow. Wow. And the, what happened was, of course, y'all know the, the tragedy that happened, but wherever your plane was, it was grounded. It was grounded for weeks. Wow. And wherever your plane was that was grounded, they were charging you astronomical fees. But not I. Because I had heard from God that my plane was in the hangar. <clears throat> now, what I'm trying to say is I want you to listen to this. I don't want you to take it lightly. You know, I don't go through the yay, 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 but I, I'm, I'm accurate. If God tells me, I can tell you. God tells me I'm not going to play with it. Amen and amen. So now, <clears throat> I've got to validate the word. I've got to vet the word. In other words, I've got to be able to see that word mirrored in the word of God. That what God is doing in life now is an echo of what he has done in the past. So it'll line up with the word. It'll line up with the word. And so this word that God has given me that we must be intentional is very, very important. Now we should always act intentionally, 
but we know we don't. Amen. There are some things we start tolerating that we should not tolerate. My first, I got three points. One point is the dynamics of intentional faith. Then uh, I want to talk about the, uh, <clears throat> after we talk about the dynamics, that, that's why we will define it. And then I, I want to talk about the derailment, how your intentional faith can be derailed. And then we'll close out with the discovery. What I'm going to discover as I walk in intentional faith in these coming days. Now, <clears throat> what did they pass out to y'all? All right, now I don't want y'all to read that now. I understand. I thought it was. I thought it was. That's what it was. That's good. But don't you read on that now. You need to listen to me now, so, all right? Then you read that later. Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Amen and amen. Now, so even if I refer to it, I want you to go look at some wedges there. I don't know what you doing. Because then you're going to miss something. All right. Now, praise the Lord. I'm glad to have it. Give it to you. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. So when I look at, I need to understand what is what did, what, did, what what does the Lord mean by intentional faith? Everybody say intentional faith. Intentional faith. <clears throat> See, you are going to live by some philosophy. You are. <clears throat> You're going to live by some philosophy, some way of thinking, some thought. Colossians two and eight tells us. Now they don't have that, so don't y'all look on the paper for it. You know, you know, because I don't know if I said they go, oh my God, where is it? No, he says he warns us by. Uh, being beguiled by the philosophies of the world. So we are going to be led or guided by some thought, some philosophy. Well, we as believers, when we make Jesus Lord, we say at that time that we are going to be led by his word. Amen. I don't need to seek out a soothsayer, a fortune teller. I don't need to call 1-800-WITCH. I got the word of God. Amen. Now, intentional faith, here's our working definition, is the discipline to function in scriptural faith. Oh, I love it. In the face of the odds, opposition, obstructions, and objections, fully expecting the promised results. And that is, even though you will be faced with the odds against you, you may not have what others say you ought to have. But when you have a desire that God has given you or a desire, an aspiration that you have, you have a right to face down the odds and intentionally release your faith and see results. Amen and amen. Now, the reason we have to have intentional faith is because we will all face negative facts. Everybody say negative facts. We will face negative facts. I want to give a definition. For, oh, I love it. Refers to those established negative evidential facts that are contrary to the express will of God and are subject to change. Now, see, we intimidate. Most people get intimidated by facts. Why? Because, you know, a fact is that. I mean, that's, that's fact. And for them, that, trump, that, that trumps the truth of God's word but not us, not, not we who are believers. Let me give you an illustration. Um, I can go to the doctor, they take an x-ray, and they see a spot on the lung. That's a fact. That's a fact. I can come and get prayed for. They go back and take the x-ray, and the spot is gone. Now I have a new fact, because that old fact has been changed. So, a new fact, definition time, refers to evidential, positive, transformed state of a previous negative situation that was contrary to the will of God. <clears throat> so, we're not going to let the facts stop us. We're not going to let the facts intimidate us because we are going to overcome every negative fact with intentional faith. Yeah. Amen and amen. Now, this is what God taught me. God taught me this when I'm in a little raggedy building. Y'all can put that up. Y'all know if I came here, I was going to talk about my little raggedy building. That's where God began to teach me how to live by faith. That's 1980. In 1980, I'm 28 years old. I had been preaching. <clears throat> I had been preaching there 
for 18 years. I have nothing to show for it. And that's a, I, I, don't, I don't know anybody that's in a battle shape than that. Yeah, that's bad. Everybody say, that's real bad. That's real bad. And that's a fact. That ain't no fabricated picture. That's, that's a fact. I was broke. That's a fact. I was an emotional wreck. That's a fact. My, you know, they, they about to, now they did repossess the car. That's a fact. Right? But God told me now, he says, now, son, you have to do like Abraham. Well, okay. What do you mean, Abraham? Abraham, the Bible says, and he considered not his own body now dead, when he's about 100 years old, neither yet the, sadness, the, the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the fact, or the un, he staggered not, you know, at all of that. He staggered not at, but the Bible says, but he was strong in faith giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he promised, he was able also to perform. So we don't deny facts. We defy facts. We are not going to let the present negative fact that is against the will of God for our lives determine what we choose to believe and choose to expect. Amen and amen and amen. So now, uh, throughout the Bible, we can see this message of intentional faith. I read uh, from the, uh, I read first, uh, the, I, I, I text scripture, the just shall live by faith. All throughout the Bible, we see this message of faith. And so, <clears throat> Jesus teaches the message of faith there in Mark chapter 11. I call this the message of intentional faith. When I see faith taught in the Bible, I see several categories of faith. Number one, there is saving faith. Number two, there is a submission faith. Now, submission faith is the faith that Peter used. He says, nevertheless, at thy word. We never see that Peter doing a lot of confession and all of that, but when Jesus told him to launch out, he says, nevertheless, at thy word, I will, and he got results. Then there is surrogate faith, when I'm using my faith on the behalf of another like the centurion did, like the woman who had her daughter, daughters with vex with the devil, surrogate faith. Then there is special faith. That is the faith that I am given by the Holy Spirit to believe for, for the supernatural. But then Jesus teaches in Mark 11, he teaches systematic faith or the system of faith. And in teaching the system of faith, Mark chapter 11, but they'll put it on the screen there, and he said, and Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Now watch this. And then he uses the principle. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever you desire when you pray, Believe you receive them and you shall have them. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have all against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. Now, I know this pastor teaches faith. I know you, this pastor teaches the word. So I'm not trying to act and teach you like you never heard this. No. But you can get to a place where even though you have heard, you let it slip that you have to be intentional and release your faith. Amen. You will have a pain, and instead of going, uh, you know, go, I mean, attacking us, no, no, not, that is not the will of God. You have thoughts that come to your head, and you're just meditating on them, negative thoughts without casting them down. Now, that's not being intentional. Intentional faith requires that you are not going to tolerate anything other than the will of God. Huh. Hallelujah. So, now when we look at this, we got to understand that <clears throat> this, is the, this is the message of Scripture. The message of Scripture is that I got to believe beyond the present evidence. The Bible says, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that, come on, believe it. Y'all know that, all right? So, that means I've got to intentionally choose to believe in the face of negatives, in the face of people saying it can't happen. In the faith, I got I to gotta choose to say, oh, no, I do, I do believe. Well, that runs in our family, and everybody in our family, no, 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 not me. 
Everybody say, be intentional. All right, I've got to be intentional when it comes to fear. Now, that part of you, when you read the prophetic word, you'll see that in there, that a lot of times we start tolerating fear. We call it being cautious. <laughs> but it's you afraid, you afraid. And listen, that's not a put down. You have to know how to resist fear, and most people don't. And, and I'm going to give you a simple way to resist fear. I've been using it ever since I was in, in 1980. God taught me how to get rid of fear. You get rid of fear by quoting the word. Huh? Yes. You quote the word. Psalms 27. You write that down. You know, you can remember all them other songs and all those other things. You can remember recipes and all that. You can remember Psalms 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is, now you got to say it. You can't just think it. And you can't go to your Bible and read it, but you got to say it out loud. It dissipates fear. It dissipates fear. Amen and amen. I got the message of uh, intentional faith has to do with, I've got to be intentional in my giving. I give the game. See, like, oh, no, you shouldn't give expected to see nothing. See, now that's stupid. No, no, because the Bible, uh, the Bible, you know, teaches giving as sowing and reaping. What farmer goes out to sow and goes, I don't care if anything grew up at all. I just really don't care. No. No, we give intentional. I'm intentional. The Bible says, put the scripture up there. <coughs> yeah, he, I said, yeah, 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 y'all should have that scripture, yeah. But this I say, he was so sparingly, should we fall so sparingly? I'm jumping around on the page, so don't bother them. You know, they're trying to find me, okay? It's good. So don't, don't, don't be, who's, in, who's back there? I just don't know who's back there. Don't worry about them. <laughs> but this I say, he was so sparingly, should we fall so sparingly? He that soweth bountifully, should we fall so bountifully? Every man, according to the purpose in his heart. Now, this is not talking about, this is not talking about tithing. This is talking about beyond the tithe. So you don't get this confused. This is talking about offering. Every man calls he purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudging on necessity, for the Lord loveth a cheerful. So the whole context of this is about giving. Now look at the promise. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always have an all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. God says, I'm going to bless you so you can be a better giver. So you can give more and more. That's, that's the plan. God says, I got to have a partner in the earth. And one of the other things that you'll read uh, in the prophetic word is that he says this is going to be a season of wealth transfer. See, now, some of y'all just, I ain't talking about me. Why not? Why, why not? See, see now I'm going to get into that why you, why you automatically, you say, well, transfer, oh, my God. No, I'm, I'm going to talk to you about that. And I'm not trying to put you down, but I'm trying to show you that you got to be intentional. Some of that wealth coming to my house. That, that's how you're, some of that, some of that increase is coming to my house. Why? The Bible says wealth and riches ought to be in your house, but you got to be intentional. Now watch this. When I'm broke, when I was broke right there in 1980, and I got these revelations, I start telling everybody, you just watch. I'll be one of the richest preachers in town. I, I, you know, and they say, we know you're broke. Look at your car. We know you're broke. I said, uh-huh, ain't no problem. But I, what did I tell you? I said, just keep watching. Yeah. One of these days, yeah. I've set something in motion. Yeah. I set it in motion with my giving. Yeah. I knew I would be rich. Amen. See, a lot of people got, got some of y'all got quiet. Like, oh, no, the Bible says, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh yeah. rich simply means to be abundantly supplied. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be a billionaire, all that, but it says that you ought to have abundance. What is abundance? Enough for me, enough to help somebody else, and I still got a grip left on. That's it. So, you know, well, Lady B and I, we believed it, and we sold intentionally for it to happen. That's why I teach it with such passion. 
because I know what brought me out. Amen and amen. We were intentional. Everybody say intentional. Intentional, intentional faith is a mandate. What do you mean a mandate? The Bible says, listen, the Bible says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So he's not talking about faith as a suggestion, but it's impossible to please God without faith. So once I get into faith, and listen to me, believers, because many of you, oh, you already know it. You already know this, and that's good. <clears throat> but see, you'll start in it, and then you'll hit a hiccup, and then you'll back away. And what God is saying for, I know you, you said, you know, 24 is the year for more. Great, I ain't got no problem with that. I know, because prophetic words that God gives to people, everybody don't get it the same way. But the essence of it is the same. Got it? And so that, that, that more that you are believing for is going to require that you understand this is not a suggestion. God is looking for people to partner with in the earth so he can do amazing things in the earth. <clears throat> you know, the whole, you know, the, uh, uh, the agreement uh, of, uh, for the $500,000. Well, if everybody broke. <laughs> Come on now, if everybody broke and the kingdom needs 500000 and the Lord tells the man of God, ask people for 5000 And if everybody broke, what we're going to do? I know what you do. Tell them, I sure hope you get it. I sure hope you get it. <laughs> but when you understand, you've been blessed to be blessed. You look for the opportunity, and you get joy in the opportunity. Now, here is how you stay disciplined in faith. Now, discipline is enforced obedience, which means I don't have to feel it. I just want the results. Many of you exercise. Some people exercise don't like it, but they want the results. I want the results. I ain't got to the exercise yet. I'm not disciplined in that area. You say, I can see. No problem. Pray for me. Now, now, in the, in the things of God, discipline is enforced obedience, not bound by feelings or emotions. It's the highest form of commitment. In other words, I don't do things because I feel like it. I do because I want the results. So, what's some things that you have to do? Number one, you have to control your thoughts to stay in faith. I mean, you're starting in faith, but to stay in faith and stay steadfast in faith, you got to control your thoughts. Everybody say, my thoughts. You got to control your, the teaching that you hear. You can't just listen to everybody on Christian radio. Lord Jesus, they serious, but they sincerely wrong. And you know, you just can't listen to that. So you've got to make sure you have the select teachers to teach you. You've got to control your tongue. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Oh my God, I can tell whether you're in faith by just listening at your talk. You've got to control your temperament. That's your attitude. And a lot of people, they're not in faith. They want some, they, you know, <laughs> they want some pity. They want you to feel sorry for them. And so they'll tell you, and listen, I'm not, I'm, I'm not putting you down. I was there. Back in 1980, last thing you want to ask me is how things going. You ain't got time for me to tell you how bad it is, how tough it is until God told me I had changed my mouth and I had to change my temperament. I had to change my attitude. Yo, don't let the circumstances shape your attitude. You let the Word of God shape your attitude. Now, what do you mean? Well, your circumstances may be bleak. That may be the, the you, know, you know, I don't know the condition of everybody in the house, but you know, you may have bills that are due. You don't know where you'll get the money from. You may be in a jacked up relationship. Oh my God. And, and in your mind, you got every right to walk in here sad. So somebody can say, baby, what's the matter? <laughs> no. Discipline is enforced obedience. Fire your feelings. Fire, fire. No, no. You tell your feelings, you're not going to bother. You're not going to run my life. You are fired. I'm running my life by the word of God. So watch this. You're going to walk, you're going to walk based on what the word promised you. And I'm walking in victory. I ain't walking in my life. 
sympathy came, <laughs> your sympathy can't get me where I need to go. Amen. Now, so we see models of intentional faith all throughout the Bible. Any faith episode you pull up in the Bible, you're going to see the person had to be intentional. Joshua walking around the walls, believing that this strategy would work and that when they shouted on the seventh day after the seventh time, that the wall would fall. That was intentional. Yeah. Amen. All throughout the Bible, intentional. Gideon goes up against, what, 135,300 men? He had to believe that he could win against the odds. Intentional. Yeah. And see, you got to believe that you can win even though the odds are stacked against you. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Amen and amen. All right, watch this. Y'all are good class. Y'all really are. Okay, okay. Because here's the point I want to get to. I want to talk about what derails you because you get all excited and hear the data. Well, praise the Lord. I don't got any attention on faith. Oh, my, yes, indeed. 24 is the year for more. Yeah. Until the devil slaps you upside the head with a fact. You get derailed, number one, by your fabricated criteria. Listen to me carefully on this. And what do you mean? When you come up with a criteria for believing that has nothing to do with Scripture, and we have all been victimized by that. See, when I was in a little ragged building, I thought I had to have 300 members to be successful. Why? Because that was what I had heard. That if it had a church that had 300 members, you could, you know, be, you know, they could pay you a good, pretty good salary. You could be all right. So now I have less than 50 members, and I'm a full-time pastor. God told me not to go back to work. That He's going to teach me how to live by faith. And so I'm, I'm scuffling, trying to get. Look, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm, everything's on hold till I get 300 members. And the Lord told you, well, who told you that? You don't work for folk, you work for me. And watch this. And he told me, and I can afford your dreams. Somebody ought to get that. Say, y'all didn't get that over here. I'm going to go over there and say it. No, no, that's what God told me. At 28, I said, look, he knew I had some big dreams. He said, I can afford your dreams. And I prospered in that little raggedy building. Lady B and I lived better than people who had churches that had five, six, a thousand members because I was living supernaturally. I know you say you ought to fix that bill. You can't fix that bill. You had to move. So I know how you feel. But you should have been fixing that bill then. Couldn't fix that. You had to move. All right, watch this. <clears throat> we get derailed by what I like to call familiar commentary. Now, what is that? you listening to people. And you will run into three categories of negative people. Y'all ready for them? Can y'all put them on the screen? Number one, you're going to run into wow people. Number two, you're going to run into whoa. Number three, you're going to run into, whoa, people. Now, let me tell you the difference. When you start telling your dream for 2024 and what you're believing for, you got some folk going to say, wow. They cannot agree with you. Because what you're believing for is so far out there for them, all they can say is, wow. A four-bedroom house? Wow. You want one of them electric cars? Wow. You, 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 you want to go to Paris? You talking about Paris, Texas? No. Wow. <laughs> then you're going to run into the woe folk. <clears throat> the woe folk is this, this. You don't get a car like that? Let me tell you how. They're the doom and gloom people. 
You, you, you don't get a car? You don't get a car like that? Do you know they haven't figured all that stuff out now? <laughs> you going to try to go to Paris? Did you hear the other day a plane crashed? I gotta hurry on now, cause I, I could stay here and play a little while, but I'm not. <laughs> How many know some old people, some old people like that, that when you start talking, they start talking about every negative in the world. Gas, gas prices gonna go up, and uh, oh, everything. <laughs> but now the whoa, folk, that's, that's, that's really a Texas term. You know, when you when you got a livestock and you want them to stop, whoa. That's the folk that try to talk you out of it. See, the wild folk, they just kind of, oh. <laughs> the wolf folk, they're just negative. But these wolf people, they want to talk you out of it. No, you don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. I ain't, I, got, I, ain't, I, ain't, I ain't never heard no preacher with no helicopter. Whoa. <laughs> Multiple locations? Oh I ain't never heard. What you trying to do? Win the whole city? <laughs> Whoa. That's good. That's good. See, see, what you ought to do, what you ought to do is get you like a two-bedroom apart, two-bedroom house first. See, just two, and, and then in the yard and you... All the children sleep in one room. <laughs> you, you talking about no five-bedroom house? And do you know what the light bill on that house going to be? You have to counter that with intentional faith. Then you can have the derailments. Y'all got to hit us by what I call faith constraints. Now, what is a faith constraint? A faith constraint has to do with the variables of faith that many believers don't understand. Now, what it is. What I mean by this is many times we miss it in faith, in intentional faith, and stand in faith because we have a preconceivement about manifestations. Hear what I mean by that? That we think God ought to do it a certain way. We kind of give God, my God, this is how I want you to do it. We don't say that, but that's our expectation. You know, Duck, I was, I was about to 300. Lord, if, you, if I'm going to be blessed, I've got to have 300 members. See, that's, that's I'm being, that's my, that's, I'm, I'm, my believing has been shut off because I got a flawed criteria. Wow. Watch this. And I got a way I want him to manifest it. And until that happens, I can't get in faith. Stay with me now. Now, the Bible talks about Thomas. The Bible says when Thomas uh, first, uh, uh, they brought the news to Thomas, Thomas, we've seen the Lord. The Bible says that Thomas, uh, let me see what my time is. Y'all are slower than I thought y'all were. <laughs> oh, my God. No, I'm... I'm Listen, I'm almost through. I really am. I'm, I'm really almost to the discovery part. Yeah, I'm I'm there. Y'all good, y'all good, y'all good, y'all good, good. I know all that whoa and all that. It got y'all with some of y'all time. That's my fault. I'm sorry. But now listen. So Thomas said, I can't believe unless I touch him. That was a criteria he set up. His faith, the Bible, when Jesus came and said, touch me, Jesus called that unbelief. And so many times, you haven't figured out how you think God ought to do it. We want God to mirror our manifestations based on what he did for somebody else. We, that's what we want. We want God. I heard her testimony. Yes, indeed. And her boss them gave them a raise. That's what they did. I, I heard that testimony. Lord, I thank you for my raise in Jesus' name. And then you get terminated. You, they, they fire you.
Hold on, hold on, stay with me now, stay with me now. See, now that's the point. See, this stuff folks don't want to talk about. Faith teachers don't talk about that when the devil tries to throw you off. Instead of being intentional in my faith and understand God's got many ways he can. That job is not my source. God, I want to thank you for that job, and you must have another door open for me. See? That's being intentional in your faith. <clears throat> now, uh, when I was in faith in the little raggedy building, had a car, and then I couldn't pay the car note. I couldn't pay the car note. I was, you know, one month behind, then another month behind, and then the people threatened. They're going to threaten come get the car. I said, y'all, no, no, y'all, come don't get it. Come get it. <laughs> so I, I said, come get the car. I can't pay the note. So come get it. So uh, they said, well, you want to park it around, the, you know, because, you know, our record truck has repo on I said, oh, no, I don't have any insurance. If I couldn't pay y'all, I couldn't pay insurance. I don't want to park it on the street and somebody hit it. I'd be messed up. <laughs> Embarrassment is a choice. Amen. I am not going to be embarrassed. Y'all come and get it. And when it was taking it off, I wouldn't cry like, oh my God. <laughs> when it was taking it off, I declared, I'm going to have a better car. Yeah. My next car is going to be better than that. Because this is not the end. I'm not going to shed one tear. You know, because this ain't, listen, and I'm not going to ride around town looking for it. It ain't my car anymore. Why don't I mean right now look at it? Oh, I think that's it. No, no. I purposed in my, I'm going to buy me a brand new car better than that car. What am I doing? I'm being in. Amen. <laughs> and amen. Watch this, watch this, watch this. So I'm not going to try to tell God how to do it. I'm not going to try to tell him how to do it. Because God told me the other day, he said, son, I got, a, I, got, I, got, I got so many ways I can manifest it. But you, you put yourself in a box. Because you can't limit me. You limit what you can believe. So I said, okay, God, what do I do? He says, all you need to do is just ask me to help you. He said, the reason you figure, you try to figure it out, because you think it's on you. He says, all I need you to do is just give it to me and rest in that I know how to bring it to you. Oh yeah, you're going to have a role to play, but just listen at what I say. <laughs> So the other day, on the New Year's Eve, we were, um, we were in faith for a certain amount of money, and the Lord told me how he wanted me to do it. So when, I, when uh, service was over, I, I got up, you know, as I always do, and, and, and I was getting ready to receive another offering. The Lord said, no, don't you do that. I ain't got no problem, because I know how to flow with the Lord. I said, no problem. And then when I got home, a person texted me and says, I'm giving another, I'm giving $10,000. Other people start texting. I am, see, God says, see, I know what I'm doing. The whole point is, many times, the people you think should help you, they won't help you, and you get discouraged. Like God can't use somebody else. You did all that confessing. He'll raise up somebody somewhere, you their power, their ability, but you got to somebody in your mind. <laughs> and God said, don't limit me to them. Yeah. I've got people stationed yeah, in your life. Yeah. You are on the path to rendezvous with favor. Yeah. Now, what do you mean? 
See, the Bible says that he surrounds the righteous with favor. So that means if I just keep walking, I'm going to run into some favor. Okay, let's wrap it up, 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 wrap it up. Wrap it up. <clears throat> now, I was going to talk about participation mechanics. Now, participation mechanics, that's obedience is required for us to, you know, to activate the divine intervention. But see, there are a lot of people who shout about the promise, but they won't participate. <laughs> they, con they just confessed that tithing thing. That tithing confession. Great confession. Ain't bit more tither than I'm an astronaut. No, if I don't participate, I don't have a right to the promise. I just declare over you that you're going to participate in the tithing promise this year. You're going to be intentional. I had to do it years ago. My God. I started tithing. I was making $65 a week before taxes. And my needs had needs. <laughs> I, was, I was living in the staging place before they put you in the projects. You know, the projects, y'all know nothing about, y'all know about projects is, yeah. I was, at, I was at the lower level. I'm waiting for the projects. That's right, I'm on the list. The roaches were so bad. Y'all know roaches are supposed, when you turn the light on, they're supposed to flee. Not in my house. Turn the light on, they say, thank you, now I can see where I'm going. I went to borrow some money from a guy, and he, I didn't know how I was going to pay him back. I did, really didn't. I really didn't know how I was going to pay him back. And at the time, I was desperate. And I said, uh, you know, let me host, you know, let me host. He said, he said Ira, if you're tired, God will bless you. I ain't come for no sermon. I said, then he tells me, I'm not a tither. Come on. This dude is telling me to tithe. And he not a tither. Watch this. And he ain't gonna even leave me no money. But that was the word I needed. I went and read the Bible. And uh, that next week, I got my check. I took out $6.50. I tithed right off the top. I'm going to participate. Yeah. He said, you open the windows of heaven, pull me out a blessing. Lord knows I need a blessing. And then on top of that, I gave a $5 offering. I went from a dollar giver on Sunday. That's all I was going to give on Sunday was a dollar. That's all I was going to get, one dollar. I had, I had correct change. Watch this, watch this. See, some of y'all didn't grow up in the church culture. We grew up, they had a table in front. See, some of y'all, they had that table. Y'all know, y'all know, y'all know them deacons still behind that table. And they kind of count that money right there, y'all see. And then they'll say, okay, 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 okay. We about $10 show. I was ready for that. I was ready for that. I had a quarter. I had my quarter. That's my extra. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, for some of y'all say, I never experienced that. You didn't miss a thing. <laughs> you didn't miss a thing. Watch this. So I went from a dollar giver to an $11.50 giver overnight. I was going to participate. Two weeks later, I go to work, and uh, because I was so broke, I didn't have the right shoes. I didn't have safety shoes. I had imitation safety shoes on. And I go to work, 
And they said, the boss want to see you. I'm like, oh, my God. First thought hit me, they found out. <laughs> they found out I don't have the right shoes, and they're going to fire me. So I go, and I sit down, and he smiles. He says, your supervisor quit. And he recommended you to take his job. Then he said, but you know here, seniority rules the day. And you have the least seniority in the department. But management met this morning, and we changed the policy so you could get promoted. <laughs> don't you tell me, Tyler, don't work. Don't you tell me that. Now, I didn't even, man, my supervisor, we were like, we was on great terms, and I knew what he was. I, but God raised him up to help me. Yeah. Everybody say, you got to participate. <laughs> okay. I just, I got, I want to do another one. I, I got to touch this, and this is personal matters. That's another restraint, faith, faith uh, constraint, personal matters. God's not going to violate your will. Many times you pray for people to be healed, but see, they want to go be with Jesus. And see, a lot of believers can't handle that. I prayed and they died because they wanted to go be with Jesus. And you can't stop it. It's their will that overrides your prayer. Amen. It's their will that overrides your prayers. And what does Jesus say about it? Let not your heart be troubled. Now, you got to be intentional when that happens. Because we're going to miss the relationship. But Jesus says, don't let your heart be troubled. In this coming year, some loved ones may go on to be with the Lord. But he says, let not your heart be troubled. People will tell you, you need to grieve. The Bible says he has borne our griefs. And he's carried our sorrows. So if he bore them, I don't have to. I don't have to act a fool at the funeral to make people think I love my mother. I loved her. She knew I loved her. But Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. So really, you know, and uh, I, could, I could have joy in my heart because, listen, y'all don't know my mama. My mama loved her some Jesus. My mama loved to shout. That's my, I knew mama was up in heaven having her a ball. Are y'all listening to me? See, see, your perspective got to change. Yeah, yeah, I miss mama, but I got to tell you, when I start thinking about how faithful mama has been and where mama is now, I'm not going to be selfish. I wish she was still here. No, I'm glad she's where she is. She's with Jesus. That's where she wanted to be. What? And I'm happy for her. That's, that's too much for some of y'all, but you'll need it. You may need it this year. So let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. So um, the discover. I discover how God works. And God works through many, many ways. He works and he intervenes through angelic supernaturals. I believe in angels uh, 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 giving assistance. Y'all put that up real quickly. And he works through adv advantageous strategies. When I'm in faith, intentional faith, is not only going to call the angels to go to work, but it's also going to give it, you know, angels, you know, every time I come here, I got to tell my story when me and, the, me and uh, 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 Marla and uh, Michaela was in the jet. Y'all know that. Y'all remember what said? How many never heard that story? Never heard that story? Oh, my God, you know, I got to tell y'all. <laughs> We're in a jet, 43,000 feet. Both engines go off. The jet is falling. You remember my story, huh? <laughs> she said, and you were eating. <laughs> and the food fell on the floor. <laughs> they can tell you, I ain't panicked. Yep. And they didn't either. I called the angels. Angels, I don't know how y'all gonna set this baby down, but I ain't dying tonight. <laughs> and I'm in it. I'm in it. 
And um, God told me to pray for the pilots. They got it on. We, we fell 30,000 feet. They got it on around 13,000 13, feet when they got the engines on. You know, I had somebody tell me, I wish I could have been there. I said, you stupid. <laughs> I ain't want to be there, man. <laughs> Do you know some people can hear your testimony <clears throat> and say the stupidest stuff? Like, really? You want to be in a plane falling out the sky? He will give me advantageous strategies. He will give me advantageous strategies. He will give me, watch this, assigned supporters. He will also give me an amazing supply. So I expect God to move in this year. Even in emergencies, even when on assignment, I believe that God has angels dispatched to help me. I'm intentional when I say they hearken to the voice of his word. I'm intentional. I'm intentional in believing that God has uh, uh, given me a, a amazing strategies. He'll tell me what to do when I need to do it. I'm intentional when I believe that God has assigned supporters, people that I do not know, but he'll raise them up at the right time. Can I get an amen in the house? And then I'm believing for an amazing supply that God already knows what I have. And he can cause what I have to go further than I ever dreamed it would be. Amen, amen. I wondered and I thought about how I would close this message. So, you know, I've been preaching, oh, 61 years? Yeah. I started when I was a little boy at 10. I'm 71 now. With my good-looking self. Uh-huh. Watch this, watch this, watch this. And so, I have an amazing library of my closings. Amazing, you know. And um, it's, it's kind of like those of you who like clothes, and you can go in your closet, and you can look. You go. And then you decide to reach and get one that you already want. Amen. Amen. So that's what I'm going to do tonight. See, I started to close with my story of the little boy who stood on the on the, uh, the house was burning. He's on the balcony. There are people telling him to jump, but he wouldn't jump. They got the tallest man in town telling him to jump. I can catch you. He wouldn't jump. They went and got the smartest man in town from the university, and he said, jump. I know how fast you will fall. I'll be able to catch you. He wouldn't jump. They got the strongest man in town telling him to jump, but the little boy wouldn't jump. Then along comes this scrawny looking guy, and he says, jump, and the boy leaped. Everybody say, wait a minute. The news people said, you wouldn't jump for the strong man, and you wouldn't jump for the smart man, and you wouldn't jump for the tall man. What made you so eager to jump for that guy? He said, that's my father and I could trust him. Uh, 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 uh. That's not the clothes. That's not the one. 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 That's like the, that's like, you know, that's like ladies, how you take that dress and you take that thing and you say. And then you say, no, no, no. So here's the close. It's about the man that's walking through the desert. He's about to starve. He's about to die of thirst. He comes up on a pump. And this pump has a cup of water. And a note under the pump. And the note says, take the water in the cup. Prime the pump. 
drink from the well and refill the cup for the next traveler. Hmm. He says, wait a minute. Suppose this don't work. And I pour that water in there and nothing happens. He says, listen, if I drink the water I got, at least I'll quench my thirst for a little bit. What must I do? So he finally decided I'm going to trust the process. So he pours the water in and he starts working the process. And it works. Water comes up and he drinks cup after cup after cup. He fills his canteen and he, yeah, fills the cup again. And he puts the note right back under the cup, sets the cup down, starts on his journey. It's about a half a mile down the road, and he turns around, and he runs back. He runs back, and he takes the cup and set it aside. And then he takes the note, and he takes out his pen, and he writes at the bottom of the note, trust me, it really works. And he signs his name to it. And he says, when the next traveler comes this way, I want him to know that the process has been tried and proven. And I'm on, I'm, I want him to know that I have trusted the process and it really works. He puts the cup back on top of the note, starts on his journey. That's how I'm closing tonight. I'm closing tonight to say, I have trusted this process. <laughs> I have worked this word and I got news for you tonight I need you to trust me it really works I read the word on healing and he healed my body and I need you to trust me tonight if you're dealing with sickness and disease I want you to know it really works I was broke, busted, and disgusted. But watch this. I trusted the process. And I, I need you to trust me tonight. I'm telling you, it really works. It is no secret. What God can do, what he's done for others, he'll do for you. Give the Lord a hand.